Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, no, I, I really don't. I, I, I would prefer to like, keep it in the pictures and in the video. And then I won't tell Josephine today. So when she sees the picture, she's like, you forgot the tie? Chris, you put on the tie. Yeah, you put on the yeah, I'm great, man. That's your favorite. MVP. You brought it out. MVP. Yeah. MVP. Yeah. Actually, beautiful. Oh. I don't know if I... <laughs> You're crying a little. Oh, so beautiful. Oh, you like it? Like my dad? <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> I'm not a man that's usually at a loss of words, but I am now. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank
It looks beautiful. It looks yeah. it's so you. See the back. It's just so pretty. It has pockets. <laughs> oh, it has pockets too. <laughs> I'm already. I'm so just on the pockets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Thank all sweaty you. and ugly. <laughs> <laughs> You're a little sweaty. Yeah. You look beautiful. No, no, we can't kiss yet. Can't kiss yet. <laughs> <laughs> Not until the wedding, right? <laughs> no, I guess so. I just can't resist. <laughs> so pretty. How long did it take to put on? Like, like two minutes. Really? It was really easy. Yeah, dress. it was easy. It only has three buttons. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it still. This is so real. <laughs> Even now. <sighs> it's been a day, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. I'll let the picture show <laughs> later on. Come on, we're suiting We're not all crap. I'll take it, yeah. That's nice. <laughs>
please join hands. Wow, what a beautiful day today it is. Um, first of all, I want to thank everyone for just coming together and just celebrating the love that Adolfo and Josephine have for each other. And I just want to take a moment to just acknowledge just what a beautiful day it is today. You know, yesterday at the wedding rehearsal, when I saw the two families come together, I just was just in awe of just how loving these two families were. You know, the coming together of just, just two families and two histories and just two stories. And it just made me feel just so privileged to just witness this. And I just want to thank everyone for just being here in this special moment and just acknowledging, you know, these two beautiful people here today. So thank you so much. You know, friends, family, loved ones, we come together on this beautiful day as witnesses to join Josephine Rodolfo in marriage. We gather around them now in this wonderful place and we look on with them with love and hope as these two begin their new life together as one. Um, one of my favorite quotes is by Maya Angelou, who's an author, and she says, love recognizes no barriers. It jumps hurdles, leaps fences, penetrates walls to arrive at its destination full of hope. And especially now when the world seems a little crazy, sometimes hope is all that we have. And this quote says so much about the love that is shown here today, not just by the family and the friends that is joined together, but by the love that Rodolfo and Josephine have for each other. And it also reflected by the community that is joined together here today. I, I am Josephine's cousin. And I have watched Josephine grow up to be the strong woman that she is here today. And I've also watched Rodolfo and Josephine's relationship grow. And I've been pro so privileged to see that. And their love manifests itself into a clarity of purpose, hope, meaning, and a foundation of love. And if we, as we do this uh, ceremony here today, I ask you, what are you willing to jump hurdles for? For love, you know, what, what, what does love mean for you? Josephine and Rodolfo, are you ready to proclaim the foundation of love for one another in the sight of the heavens and these witnesses? Yes. Yes. Josephine, do you take Rodolfo to be your lawfully wedded husband? Will you honor and cherish him, love, trust, and commit to him through joy and pain, sickness and in health, and whatever life may throw at you both until death do you part. I do. Rodolfo, do you take Josephine to be your lawfully wedded wife? Will you honor and cherish her, love, trust, and commit to her through joy and pain, sickness and in health, and whatever life may throw at you both until death do you part? I do. At this time, Josephine and Rodolfo will exchange vows and then rings. This is a very special time in the ceremony as vows and rings are a symbol of binding and connection, love and healing, a symbol of attachment and belonging, not a possession, but a partnership. Okay. Josephine, why don't we take this moment to hear the vows you have written for Rodolfo. All right, can you guys hear me? <laughs> All right, Rodolfo, there's no combination of words that can fully express how much you mean to me and how much you've changed my life for the better, but I will try. You came into my life exactly when I needed you the most. And now I don't know how I existed without you by my side. I've never met a kinder, more loving and genuine person. I admire how you never get jaded by life no matter how difficult it gets. You've taught me to be kinder, more patient, and more curious about the world. Uh, loving you is the easiest thing I've ever done, and I'm so lucky you chose me to do life with. I used to be so afraid of the future and the concept of forever, 
But now that you're in my life, I've never been more excited for anything. And forever doesn't seem long enough. Thank you for always listening to me. Thank you for always going along with my silly antics. Thank you for making me laugh so hard that I can't breathe. <laughs> but most of all, thank you for showing me what it's like to be fully known and truly loved. I vow to always be your biggest supporter wherever your career takes you, even if you decide to take a clerkship in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I vow to always be your editor and proofreader whenever you need it. And I vow to always put our relationship first. And above all, I vow to love you with all my heart. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Um, Rodolfo, why don't we take this moment to hear the vows you have written for Josephine. My dearest Josephine, life with you has been the most wonderful part of my life. I recall the excitement I felt when we began dating. I recall the fun and adventures we have had since. I also recall the happiness I have felt in just being at home with you, doing absolutely nothing. And that's something I had never felt happiness in doing before you. And even through the difficulties of life, law school, illness, being with you, loving you has made it all the easier. I have found that when love is right, loving is easy. I love the love that we have and the love that we have had. But I've come to realize I'm most excited about the love that, would, that is to come, the love that we will have. This is because I love you more now than I did yesterday. And yesterday I loved you more than, than I did the day before. I have found that love grows stronger every day. I imagine love has to. It grows roots and blossoms into a home, a home to weather against the winds that make this world turn. I vow to love you, care for you, and cherish you. I vow to respect you and understand you. I vow to be a kind steward to your caring and giving heart. And importantly, I vow to grow our love and grow with you as we take on the challenges of life. This I vow to you, my dearest Josephine. That was, that was both very beautiful. Right now we're gonna do the ring exchange. Josephine, please repeat after me. Rodolfo, I promise to love you. Rodolfo, I promise to love you. And commit to you my whole life. And commit to you my whole life. I promise to be there for you. I promise to be there for you. When you need me. When you need me. To be honest with you. To be honest with you. To be faithful to you. To be faithful to you and you alone, and you alone, and to walk through the valleys of life together, and to walk through the valleys of life together. I offer you this ring, I offer you this ring, as a symbol of my love, as a symbol of my love, everlasting. Everlasting. <laughs> and please hand over the ring to Rodolfo. Rodolfo, please repeat after me. Josephine, I promise to love you, Josephine, I promise to love you. And commit to you my whole life. And commit to you my whole life. I promise to be there for you. I promise to be there for you. When you need me. When you need me. To be honest with you. To be honest with you. To be faithful to you. To be faithful to you. And to you alone. And to you alone. And to walk through the valleys of life together. And to walk through the valleys of life together. I offer you this ring. I offer you this ring. As a symbol of my everlasting love. As a symbol of my everlasting love. Josephine Rodolfo, having proclaimed your love and commitment to one another in the eyes of all of you, and with the power vested in me by the state of California, I am happy to pronounce you as husband and wife. You may now kiss each other as husband and wife for the first time.
Family and friends, we're getting ready to do speeches and toast. So if I can ask for everyone's intention on our bride and groom. And first up, I'd like to welcome one of our groomsmen, Jose Alvarado. Can everyone make some noise for Jose? Have some backup dancers? No, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, hello, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jose Alvarado, and I have the honor of giving the best man speech tonight. So I first met Rodolfo almost 10 years. We're almost, we'll hit our 10-year anniversary this, come, this January, don't forget, when we're still both undergrads at UC Berkeley. We were selected for this fellowship, so we had to take a class, and then we ended up living together over the summer here in, Sac or, or in Sacramento. And we essentially lived in a huge studio with no walls or beds were facing each other. So you don't get to know each other pretty well. And, you know, once you share that kind of space with someone, you either become best friends or you just, like, hate each other. And I'm here speaking, so I think we, we know how that worked out. But uh, one thing, that I learned a few things about Adolfo living with him. First is that the man is blind as a bat without his glasses. <laughs> Second of all, he, he can't cook to save his life. He actually burned my spatula making a quesadilla, which I haven't forgotten about that, by the way. It's a crew in interest as we speak. <laughs> but, uh, you know, when you know someone for this long, essentially almost a decade, you get to grow with someone, right? Especially at that age. So I was there when he graduated Berkeley the first time and the second time. Congrats, by the way. Uh, I was there when he got his first job out of college, first promotion, when he got his first apartment, maybe he helped him move. And I was, seems about right that I was there when he met Josephine. I actually, I like to take credit that he met Josephine. I still remember. <laughs> kind of the reason we're all here, but that night they met, you know, for those, you know, Rodolfo, you know, he's a, he's a shy guy. He can be a little timid. So there was at least two instances throughout the night where I'm like, Hey, Rodolfo, what are you doing? Go, I think she likes you. Go talk to her. He's like, you think so? I was like, no, yeah, go talk to her. And, you know, eventually, you know, they hit it off, exchanged numbers, and 
even the next day when we were driving back from Tahoe, we did a guy's trip to Tahoe. We were kind of brainstorming the text messages he was sending her. Because, <laughs> you know, he, was shy, he wanted to make sure he didn't mess it up, right? He realized he found something here. So, you know, we feel like we're part of the process when they met. And at the time, Josephine was living in San Jose and Rodolfo in Sacramento, which is a two-hour trip each way, four hours round trip. And they started hanging out and driving back and forth. And, you know, that's how you know it's love, right? If we grew up in Southern California, you don't drive 30 minutes unless you're going to marry someone. So <laughs> two hours each way, that's, that's love. <laughs> but, uh, you know, all joking aside, obviously, Dolph a great guy. I wouldn't, you know, be friends with him this long if he wasn't. I mean, he immigrated from El Salvador, didn't speak English, and he graduated from Berkeley Law School, one of the top law schools in the country. So I think that says a lot about him. <laughs> yeah. So not just like the kind of person he is, but he's a hard worker, good head on his shoulder. And Josephine, you're, you have a great guy. I hope you realize that. And, you know, we officially, as a group, want to entrust Rodolfo into your care now. So, you know, make sure, keep him away from open flames, you know, and make sure he always has his glasses when he walks or, you know, I'll save you a few trips to the ER, just telling you that. And I'm going to pass it over to the other groomsmen who will say a quick word about Rodolfo. Hello, everyone. So you might be wondering why all four, four of us are up here, and it's because Rodolfo was too kind to choose one of us um, <laughs> um, for, as best man. So we're all the best men. Um, but Jose spoke for us. I'll keep it brief. Uh, congratulations, Josephine and Rodolfo. It's been amazing to see you all together. Uh, true love, really. Um, even in conversations with Rodolfo from Mexico City all the way back in Tahoe, I mean, he just expressed kind of Something that I think is hard to find, right? Even for folks in their 50s or 60s or 70s, right? Like he said he feels complete in every aspect of his life. And Josephine's a big aspect of that, to say the least. So congratulations, y'all. And um, yeah, um, I'll pass it over to Ernie. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Ernesto. Uh, he's also, his middle name is also Ernesto, if you didn't know. So. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. Uh, just, I guess about the cooking. I do have one story. I, I'll just, I'll keep that brief too. Uh, yeah, make sure to keep him away from ovens when the pizza is still in there. Because he uh, was visiting one time and he dropped it in my oven. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just, just want to say congratulations. And, and yeah, take care, uh, take care of him. Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Jesse. I'm the fellow Salvadoran here of the group. There's, for those who don't know, you probably do know, living in California, you know, it's mostly Mexican around, Mexicans around us. I like the hot, <laughs> which is, you know, no hate, but, you know. <laughs> we love y'all, but you know what? Sometimes it's just great to find a brother that you're just navigating life through. And the fact that, you know, you're our brother and, you know, we've, we have a strong bond. The fact that now we're giving off to Josephine. So Josephine, take care of this guy. You know, he's always been the youngest of the group. So, you know, he is our little brother, and we've always had to look after him because he makes some silly mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but we, we entrust him to you, Josephine. We love you guys, and here's to you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for our best men. Let's make some noise for our best men. That was beautiful. All right. Up next, we have our bridesmaids, Kim and Lauren. Can you guys help me welcome Kim and Lauren? I'm Kim, one of Joe's bridesmaids and close friends. And I'm Lauren, one of Joe's bridesmaids and close friends. And you might be wondering why we're both up here to, together to give this speech. Well, it's become somewhat of a tradition now. Joe and I gave a speech together for Kim's wedding. 
and Joe and I gave a joint speech for Lauren's wedding, so it only seemed fitting that we would complete the trifecta with one last joint speech in honor of jo Joe's big day. <laughs> Joe is my oldest friend. We met 22 years ago when we were 10 years old in core class at Dabo Vista Middle School. We could pretty much have a kid now that could drink. <laughs> you know how they say people these days don't even memorize their partner's phone number? I still remember Joe's home phone number to this day. It's 925-736-8349. I'll always remember Joe's dad picking up and pretending that there was... <laughs> No, it just means that lived there. <laughs> he always made me laugh, and we wish that he could be here today, but know that he's watching over you and Rodolfo today. And earlier today, when you saw the hummingbird, that confirmed that. <laughs> <laughs> Throughout our many years of friendship, we have had so many great memories, from jumping on the trampoline and pool days to concerts and trips. In middle school, we would mainly just go to each other's houses or get dropped off and see a movie and, and end the end night at Cold Stones. <laughs> then in high school, we would start our early 6 a.m. morning session, mornings securing a parking spot on the street and having jam sessions in the car blasting music while waiting for classes to start. I still can't believe we did that. I met Joe in English class our freshman year of high school. We also both played the clarinet in band. But it was not friendship at first sight. It was more of a slow burn type of thing. Both of us were a little quiet and shy in high school. We were both band nerds after all. So it took a few years for us to actually figure out that we were meant to be best friends. It wasn't until the last summer before college that Joe and I started getting closer. To, um, of course, right before we all separated to go to different, different schools. Joe went to UC Irvine and I went to UC San Diego. So we used to carpool back home for winter break. One particular memory that stands out is when we were stuck in crazy traffic on the I-5 over the grapevine. The drive home was taking twice as long as it was supposed to. We were both starving and we had to pee really badly, but we were nowhere near any fast food restaurants. And then a freak snowstorm hit us and we had to pull over because it was so hard to see. It was one of those road trips where every single thing seemed to go wrong, but it didn't really matter because that is the trip that probably cemented our friendship and we were permanently bonded after that, and we discovered just how much that we have in common. Uh, we're both Myers-Briggs ISFJs. We share the same guilty pleasure of watching makeup tutorials on YouTube, and we still do that. <laughs> uh, and we are diehard Taylor Swift fans. You've probably heard a lot of Taylor Swift today, so. <laughs> And we have the same taste in food and can both probably eat sushi every single day of our lives and, and not get sick of it. So we just seem to think the same way about basically everything. So over the years, the three of us have been inseparable. We would spend every free moment together and even when we were at work, we would always be G-chatting, planning for the next brunch, girl, girls trip, concert, or music festival. This is when two and a half Asians came to be. Lauren and I are the two Asians, and Joe is the half. So after college, we all moved back to the Bay Area, and every weekend, Joe and Lauren would come visit in San Francisco and stay the whole weekend brunching away and going out. We've had many fun girl trips to Slow, Chicago, and New York. We've been to countless concerts together and music festivals like Outside Land and Snow Globe. So naturally, we had to come up with a hashtag of all our fun adventures together. It is so special to have friends that you, can, you have grown up with and can share anything with. Anyone who is lucky enough to have Joe in their life knows that she is the most loyal and incredible friend who would do anything for the people she cares about. She has this uncanny ability to make you feel special and listened to. She has been there for me during my hardest moments in life when I've been struggling with crippling anxiety. She never judges and she always knows exactly what to say to make you feel better. But can we take a moment to take to look at how beautiful the bride is today? <gasps> Yay! <laughs> Woo! Our best friend is so pretty, and we love the way Rodolfo looks at her. Not only is Joseph pretty and has the most beautiful eyes, might I add, she is the best friend anyone could ask for. She is always there to listen, gives great advice, and has such great memory. She is always down to do anything, and it always puts others first. And now that Kim and I are new mothers, 
Joe has also become the best honorary auntie to our babies. No matter how many times we go on and on about spit up and poopy diapers and sleep deprivation, Joe has always been attentive to every detail, even if she's pretending, but she actually authentically cares. And she celebrates every happy milestone, every hard, challenging moment. And she is truly one of the most selfless, genuine, and compassionate people I know. So, so far, this has been more of a love letter to Joe. Sorry, Rodolfo. So you might be wondering how Rodolfo fits into the picture. <laughs> so Joe and Rodolfo met three and a half years ago in Lake Tahoe. Joe and Carla have been on a girl's trip to Tahoe when they decided to meet up with some guys that they knew at their cabin. When they got there, Joe couldn't help but notice the cute guy in the glasses. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it must have been meant to be because the two of them gravitated toward each other. Thanks also to some prompting and encouragement from Carla. Shout out to Carla for the best wing woman! So after midnight, they decided to go to the bars and that's when the flirting really began. Then the rest is history. We knew he was a special one when Joe told us, told us a story about how they met. Right away, Lauren and I could tell this time was different. Joe said, he was someone that she, she could have deep conversations with, talk about books, and someone that made her laugh. Joe was giddy whenever she talked about Rodolfo. They spent hours messaging each other on Instagram, even when Rodolfo left for a month-long trip to Europe, where it would have been easy for a new relationship to fizzle out. They talked every single day and grew even closer. Kim and I instantly liked Rodolfo the first time we met him. He is funny, kind, genuine, super smart. He's a lawyer. I mean, if I ever get into legal trouble, I know who to call. <laughs> he is an awesome storyteller, a talented mixologist, like all the cocktails today, they're, they're, all, they're all Rodolfo. Like, I mean, he's not technically behind the bar, but they're all inspired by it. <laughs> and most importantly, he makes our best friend's smile light up like no one else can. Actually, sorry, most importantly though, Joe's dog Miso loves Rodolfo just as much as he loves Joe, and that is saying something. So that's the most important thing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Individually, Joe and Rodolfo are incredible people. Together, they are the ultimate team. Joe has been Rodolfo's steadfast cheerleader through law school and studying for the bar. Rodolfo is a true romantic and finds new ways to surprise Joe and show her how much he cares about her. Now, I wanted to share this text message that I received from Joe on August 19th, 2019. You don't have to look so worried, Joe. It's not that embarrassing. Okay, now I quote. Rodolfo, Rodolfo told me he loved me this weekend for the first time. I said it too, of course. It was really sweet. And he wrote me this really sweet letter last weekend. I just started crying as soon as I started reading the, le the letter. I can't even remember what it said. I think I blacked out, LOL. <laughs> she then said something along the lines of, it's been a really long time since I felt this happy. My response was, well, hopefully Rodolfo has been worth the wait. And now, here we are today, celebrating two people who couldn't be more perfect for each other. Take a look around at this stunning venue after only eight months of planning, they, well, mostly Joe, sorry, Rodolfo, or orchestrated the most beautiful wedding. <laughs> and Joe, it looks every bit as magical as the 32-slide PowerPoint that you put together when you first got engaged, Miss <laughs> Organizational Queen. <laughs> we are so excited to celebrate your love on this beautiful day. Let's raise a glass and cheers to the happy couple. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our maid of honor, Kat. Hi. Okay, 
Hello, everyone. For those who don't know me, my name is Kat, and I am Josephine's big sister. And that's always been a little weird for me to say, because anyone who knows us or Josephine knows that growing up, I have probably spent a lot more time looking up to her. And I'm sure big sisters ever are going to cringe at me right now, but it's the best day to be honest. So um, from teaching me about TikTok and the latest makeup trends to being the first one of us to move away from home to go to college, to being the first one of us to travel outside the country. I have a, I've had a lot to learn from Jo. Most notably, my fearless little big sister, who lives her life marching to the beat of her own drum and following her heart, has always carved her own path with decisiveness. And I don't know about you all, but to me, that is a lot to admire. And I say little because she is technically younger, one year and 10 months to be exact, but there is nothing little about her and not just because she's a whole inch taller than me, and when you're short like us, you know every inch matters. We keep track of that kind of stuff. But because she's always been mature and wise beyond her years. As young kids, our dad lovingly called her the tank commander. <laughs> and that's because she was a big personality out of the gate, unafraid to go after what she wanted or speak her mind or when she needed to stand her ground. She's exactly the type of person you would want on your side. When we were little, I want to say Josephine was about four, which would make me around five or six. We had these older cousins who came to visit us from Japan. And in true older cousin fashion, they tormented us. And I went, went out of their way to exclude us, make fun of us, turned off our favorite TV shows we were watching, knowing we had no idea how to operate the remote, just got a kick out of making things difficult for us. And I was terrified of them. I mean, they were older, bigger, spoke another language, and could often not be bothered by us little kids. So when we were forced to give up our shared bedroom for their stay, of course they put up a sign that read, no Catherine and Josephine allowed. <laughs> Even though Josephine was the youngest of us all, at four years old, she did not tolerate most of their antics, and she butt heads with them all the time. And when she saw this sign, the first thing she said to me was, I'm going to tear it down. And I begged her not to. I, this would make them really angry, and I was very much about not poking the bear. Um, but fearless little Josephine was not scared. When she decided this is what needed to be done, she didn't listen to me. She marched right up to that door and did just that. She tore down the sign. It doesn't matter that they were quick to replace it. On that day, she was my hero. As adults, she's continued to be someone I can rely on. She's been helpful with my babies and always seems to be around when I need her most. But even before she was a super aunt, to not just my baby, apparently. <laughs> um, she's always been a super sister. One moment in particular that sticks out in my mind, when I was attending nursing school in LA, Steve, who is my now husband and is no longer here, he's putting the babies to sleep, his car broke down in San Jose. He was so far away from where he's living in Danville with my family, and I contacted Josephine, who was also living and working in San Jose at the time, who not only picked him up that evening, but also let him stay with her that night, and got him to everywhere he needed to be the next day. Yeah, I took him to work. I, I know it wasn't always easy or convenient for her, but as Josephine implied then, and has continued to show now, that is what you do for family. That is what you do for the people on your team. Teamwork isn't about dividing work and responsibilities equally. It's about balance. Being there to fill in the gaps when they're needed and provide strength and support to your teammate when they're unable to perform at their best or complete a task alone. In other words, your team, your family, always has your back. Now let's flash forward to the spring of 2019. While we're on a family vacation in Japan, she first told me about this guy she thought was cute and smart and interesting who was traveling across Europe. And my first thought was, wow, they sound like they have a lot in common. And then when I noticed the way she lit up when she talked about him, I knew this was more than just a crush. This was the real deal. When we actually got to meet Rodolfo and got to know how thoughtful and kind he was, how patient he was, how great he was with our kiddos, and that he was not a Harry Potter fan like Josephine, we were won over. <laughs> and most importantly, the more we saw the interactions between him and Josephine, we knew that he was family. So I would like to raise a glass and toast to the happy couple for finding their perfect match, which I feel like is a difficult thing to do. I said earlier that Joe is the type of person you would want on your team. 
and on your side. And in Rodolfo, she was found the perfect teammate. So welcome to the family, officially Rodolfo. I am so happy for you both. I have a brother now. Oh, my hands are full. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome our groom's parents, Rodolfo and Daisy. Ah, uh, bueno, para mí es una una gran noche, especialmente. Uh, I'm sorry, guys, because uh, I am uh, my mother language is uh, Spanish, because. We have it translated. <laughs> <laughs> so, for me, it's a big day. Um, este, y vamos a. Bueno, solo quiero decirles dos cosas. I just want to say two things. Uno. One. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no muchas, no muchas. <laughs> La primera es este, cuando Rodolfo estaba, antes de venirse aquí a este lado de Sacramento. First, before Rodolfo came here to the side of Sacramento. La segunda, eh, en esa época. At that time. Este, me recuerdo que me dijo. I remember he said. Padre, este, me voy a estudiar a Berkeley, pero creo que no voy a regresar allá a la casa. Father, I'm going to go study um, in Berkeley, and I don't think I'm going to come back home. Y la segunda? <laughs> I broke. <laughs> este, es que eh, me da mucha alegría. And second, I am very happy. De verlo ahora graduado y feliz con su esposa. To see him graduated and happy with his wife. Y para mí eh, representa mucho, es mi último hijo. To me it represents a lot, he's my last child. Y uh, le deseo lo mejor, es... Uh, I wish you the best. Es un nuevo, un nuevo viaje. It's a new journey. Juntos, uh, siendo cada día mejores. Together, every day, being better. Y ma bienvenidos a, oficialmente a nuestra familia. And welcome officially to our family. Y a la familia extendida, bienvenida también. And to the extended family, welcome as well. Así es que yo, uh, como padre, le deseo, el me mi mejor deseo es que sean felices eternamente. And as a father, my best wish is for you uh, to be happy forever in eternity. Gracias. Ahora va a pasar mi esposa. Thank you. Now my wife. <laughs> Yo solo quiero decir dos cosas también. I just want to say two things too. <laughs> Una, um, recuerdo cuando Ernesto iba a cumplir cuatro años. One, I remember when Ernesto was going to turn four years old. Y me dijo, mamá, cuando cumpla cuatro años, ya no voy a tomar pacha. And he told me, mom, when, I'm four, when I turn four years old, I'm not going to take a bottle anymore. <laughs> Entonces, el día de su cumpleaños pasó. El siguiente día le quise dar una pacha. Then his birthday came, and the next day I tried to give, to give him a bottle. Y no quiso. Y el siguiente día tampoco. And he didn't want it, and the following day he didn't want it either. 
¿Qué yo supe de mi hijo entonces? What, what did I realize about my son that, then? Que tiene carácter, que tiene dominio propio. That he has character and he has self-control. Y, y eso me gustó. Y uh, la segunda cosa que quiero decir es, uh, Josefina. And I like that. And the second thing I want to say, Josephine. Son la respuesta a mis oraciones. You are the answers to my prayers. Desde que mi hijo iba a nacer, yo oré por la esposa de él. Um, before my son was born, I prayed for his wife. Y ahora la estoy viendo. And now I see her. Y le doy gracias a Dios y bendigo su familia. I thank God and I bless your family. Porque ahora ya no son dos, son uno. Because now you are not two, but you're one. Y bendigo todas sus generaciones, todos mis nietos, bisnietos, tataras, nietos. And I bless all the future generations, my grandkids, great grandkids, great, 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 great grandkids. En el nombre de Jesús. In Jesus' name. Los amo. I love you both. Thank you. Now raise your glasses. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our bride's mother, Carol. I remember not too long ago, um, we were celebrating my grandbaby's birthday, and Rodolfo pulled me aside, and he said that he, Mrs. McCann, I want to talk to you. So he pulled me aside, and then he said, I'd like to ask Josephine to marry me. And I said, oh, great, that's wonderful. And then, <laughs> and then we got interrupted, and he kept looking at me, and I kept wondering, why is he looking at me? And he said, Mrs. McCann, that was a question. <laughs> and I realized he was asking me permission, and I said, yes, of course. Uh, I'd be very happy if you do that. And then... <laughs> About four months later, Josephine called me, and she was all excited, and she said, Mom, Rodolfo asked me to marry him. And of course, she said yes, and I saw all the pictures on Facebook, and I, she looked very happy. And then um, about eight months later, we're here. Here we are, celebrating their marriage. But um, I want to say that I hope you, Rodolfo and Josephine, become the very best friends and stay very close friends and always treat each other with love, respect, and kindness. And Rodolfo, I hope that you become no Josephine's dream, that you become her biggest cheerleader and you support her. And Josephine, I wish that you share your happiest days with Rodolfo and that you support each other in the difficult times in life. And your father, daddy, would be very happy and very pleased today. He's watching over you. And um, I would also like to say that life is short, and I hope you have many happy memories. I hope you have a long, happy, healthy life and marriage and that as a family, you have wonderful memories together, and that our two extended families also have wonderful memories together. And I'd like to uh, say I'm so glad our families become one, and I hope we have a long life together. Congratulations, I love you both very much, and I look forward to the rest of your life.
Ladies and gentlemen, at this moment, Josephine and Rolfo have a few words they'd like to share with their guests. But wonderful speeches. Can we just give one round of applause again for everybody who got up and spoke? Um, well, it's an understatement for us to say that we're happy. And uh, we're happy for you all to be here today. When I think of our, of, a, of our wedding today, I think in that only a celebration of me and Josephine coming together and becoming what we hope to be one person in love and creating a family, but also a celebration of everybody who is here today. So all of you have in some way contributed to us individually to be the person that we are today, but also as a whole to bring us together today. So to, to be honest with you, today is a celebration of all of us, including me and Josephine. So I want to raise a glass to all of you to thank you for being here. As far away as New York, uh, Texas, Las Vegas, yeah, LA, Sacramento. I mean, we got people all over and I know this is a sign of true love. So thank you all for being here. <laughs> Cheers. Just from um, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you guys all so much for being here. Um, really appreciate that you guys all made it out here, here for our wedding. Um, love you all so, so, so much. The speeches were amazing. Thanks again for the amazing speeches. Um, yeah, and I just love you all so much. I'm so happy that you're here. Um, please celebrate, have fun, and then we're going to dance soon. <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, at this moment, we're going to be doing our bride and groom's first dance. So if I could ask for our bride and groom to come to the middle of the dance floor, and if I could ask for all eyes on our lovely newlyweds. I think I'm fine. Oh, I might need someone to lean on. Maybe that somebody is you. You could be my parachute. Promise I'll jump if you catch me Been floating so long, won't you let me love you The altitude is wearing on my chest It's hard to breathe the closer that we I'm falling. 
Chains right up for y'all 